Hi there. So this is uh, part three of lesson three. And we're just continuing from where we left off on part part two. So uh, there is this dialogue that is not in the correct order. What I'd like you to do is I want you to put this in the correct order. Okay, it will be a good exercise for you, I think. So go ahead and do that on your own, and let's scroll down just a little bit, or I'll scroll down. Scroll down. You're not scrolling. I am. Uh, and let's look at this uh, calendar or possible schedule. What I want you to do is I want you to fill in this schedule, okay? Try to make it as real as possible, and I want you to pretend that you are actually attending classes. I mean, in the flesh, really attending, not watching on a computer, but going on campus, entering the classroom, and sitting down in a chair. All right, so that would make it that would make your schedule fill up, wouldn't it? Somewhat. So I want you to write in your, your class schedule here, plus any other responsibilities that you might have during the week. And what you're going to do with this, perhaps in the future, is with a partner, um, see if you can arrange a time to meet using these expressions right here especially this one, the second one that you're going to do on your own, okay? The first one, of course, is, can we meet next week to talk about the trip to Panama? Can we meet next week to talk about the trip to wherever, wherever you might be going, the Philippines, someplace? And then go on, what's the next line and the next line and the next line? We'll utilize this dialogue that you're going to put in the correct order, and apply it to um, your real schedule. Let's move on. So now we are going to skip over this one, actually. Yes, indeed, we're going to skip this page. Absolutely. And that, so that's, the, that's the last page of Unit 7, and we're now moving on to Unit 8, and the title of Unit 8 is Job Seeking. Wow, this is a real hot topic, isn't it, because, uh, first of all, there aren't any jobs, especially with the crisis. Not only has this country and, and, and other countries been in a kind of economic slump or a bit of a recession, I'm not going to say that word, but... There aren't as many jobs available to you that were available to your parents when they first graduated from college, perhaps back in the 90s. There were lots of jobs in the 80s and 90s. You went to school, you graduated with a liberal arts degree, and you got a job in a company because of the expanding uh, economy that was Korea. But that's not the case anymore. For sure, that's not the case. Uh, so... A monster success, job seeking, that's kind of the title here. And here are some words uh, that we are going to encounter, like job seekers. Are you going to be a job seeker? Job market? How's the job market? Not so good. Terrible. I hate to say it, but it's really bad. Qualifications? What are your qualifications? Do you have any experience? in, for example, the area of um, sales or human resources, for example. Job advertisements. Have you ever uh, placed an ad looking for a job? Career advertiser, career advisors, rather, and uh, human resources, recruitment, hiring. Are companies hiring these days? No. Uh, not many. 
and career development. Okay, let's move on. So now we are scrolling to uh, page 68. And I don't know. I think, yeah, we'll do this part right here. This is a good listening exercise for you guys. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to the back of the page and read what Michael Cole and Sanjay Patel have to say about how they got their jobs, how they landed their careers. So try to answer this question. What reason does Michael give for choosing the company where he works? Okay, that's Michael. And then, what is Michael's job now? How many applicants did VW accept on the apprenticeship scheme? Michael got a qualification in what subject? Okay, so listen to Michael. I'm Michael Cole, and I work for Volkswagen in the design department. I work on the exterior design for new cars, making models for the design ideas. When I left school, I applied to do an apprenticeship with Volkswagen. I thought it would be a good company to work for, so I wrote to them to apply for the scheme. They call it a scheme. I was one of 6,000 applicants for only six hundred places. Not so good. It's worse now. After a lot of tests and interviews, they accepted me. After three years in the apprenticeship, I went to a special college to study design and modeling. When I got my qualification, Volkswagen gave me a permanent job. Okay, so you may not be able to answer those questions on the first listen but that's okay because you can go to page 168 and read it on your own read it and see if you can answer those questions let's listen to sanjay how did sanjay find a work placement what subject did sanjay study when did sanjay do his work placement at meridian meridian what is his job now so sanjay I got my job through personal contacts. I was on a two-year master's degree course in management. A family friend had a job with Meridian, a management consultancy firm, and she told me about it. I was looking for a summer work placement to get experience, and she recommended me to the managing director. It's good to get a recommendation from somebody, somebody important somebody respected. So, he, 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 good on him. I learned a lot working there and enjoyed it very much. After I finished my degree, they decided to hire me. Great. And that's where I work now as a re research consultant. So, you can do this on your own. Uh, read Michael and Sanjay's story from page 168, and then answer these questions as best you can. Let's move on. Actually, we're going to skip this part. And this is kind of interesting uh, because the title of this article here that we're looking at is The Online Job Market. So, what, what do you think that's all about? Well, Actually, this book was written a few years ago, a few years ago. Now, many, many companies are hiring people online. So what uh, platform do you think they're using to hire people these days? What do you think? Hmm. Could it be Skype? Now, Skype is the first platform, um, communication platform I'm talking about. Uh, I mentioned it because 
will probably be using it uh, for the midterm. So be sure, this is a reminder, to um, sign up for Skype and get yourself a, um, a user ID number. Okay, so we need to get that set up. Or user ID name, rather, a Skype name. Okay, now we're scrolling down to the next page, page 70. Okay, there's a little bit going on here. Let's do it. So, vocabulary three, the applicant or application process. So, you have uh, seven words. Accept, attend, apply, advertisement, candidate, invites, offers. So, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the process or the steps that someone goes through during the hiring process or the application process. Let's do number one together. So, employer posts a job what? A job what? What is it? I think you can figure this one out. It's not invites. It's not attend. It's not apply. Well, isn't it advertisement? Yes, it is on a website or in a newspaper. That's number one. So advertisement has been taken care of. What about number two and three, four, five, six, and seven? So go through this process and choose the correct word and fill it in in the blank. Uh, okay, finally finding a job. Uh, this may be the last thing that we do So today. So uh, let's see. There is a story about a young lady named Esther Garcia. And she graduated from university, blah, blah, blah. What you have, what you have to do here is um, fill in the blank, kind of like before, uh, with the correct word or phrase and um, see if you can do it all correctly. Complete the text with the following words and phrases. Can you do it? I think you can do it. Try to do this on your own, okay? This may not be the last thing. There's a little bit more here. So um, look at this last page here. This, well, it's not the last page, but um, the last page of this uh, lesson. And you'll see imperatives. What's an imperative? An imperative is like an order. It's an order. And it is shortened. There's no subject. Like the teacher wouldn't say, Jane, please sit down. She might, or he might say that. But oftentimes, the teacher won't say class or a student's name. They'll just say, Sit down. Don't chew gum. Close the door. They may add, please. Um, turn out the lights if they're going to watch a, a film or something. Um, no chewing of gum. See, they're, they're like orders. It's kind of like what or how a general or sergeant would talk to his troops. It's straightforward, no subject. So there are different kinds of imperatives. We're not going to get into the differences. All I want you to do is look at these different examples. Do not touch. Do not enter. Turn off all lights. And that leads us to exercise number one, practice. Practice one and practice two. So what I'd like you to do is to, with regards to one, fill in the blanks with either let's, don't, or please. And with regards to number two, I want you to um, write the correct form of these words, which are actually um, verbs. So, if the machine breaks down, phone the maintenance department. So it's phone, isn't it? There's no change. But there may be a change in some of these others. So you've got to figure the correct form of the verb. That brings us to the end of part three, lesson three. See you later and check your LMS. Bye-bye.